double up your proteins at meals like having a legume as your starchy food or adding some cheese to your scrambled eggs in the morning, both black beans and some kind of seasoned taco meat to your taco bowls or adding something like hard boiled eggs or cubes of ham or shredded cheese to your salads. Hit me producer pots. Wow, Dr. Sarah, you've had so many amazing videos recently teaching us about why protein is so important, all the different sources of protein and how to figure out how much we should be eating. For someone who's just starting to make some healthy changes, can you give us some top line practical tips for how you would uh, recommend approaching protein in our diets? Yeah, absolutely. Let's start with a very brief summary of how much protein we should be aiming for because there's a lot of misinformation online. So the accepted macronutrient distribution range for protein is 10 to 35% of calories. And while we definitely don't want to be exceeding that 35% of total calories from protein like range, being on the higher end of that range is definitely beneficial. So most of us will do better if we're aiming for somewhere between half to like three quarters of a gram of protein per pound of our body weight. So as an example, I aim to get about 100 grams of protein per day. And this range of half a gram to three quarters of a gram per pound body weight, or really it's 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, comes from a wide range of studies that show that this range is optimal for preventing sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass as we age, with benefits to body composition, weight management, hormone regulation, as well as cardiovascular disease risk. So as a protein goal, that is a little bit less than the one gram of protein per pound body weight recommendation that is all over social media. That amount of protein for some people is going to tick them above 35% calories from protein and potentially increase the risk for cardiovascular disease. So moving into tips, I think the, the number one tip here is to incorporate protein into each meal. So using the Nutrivore meal map, that would be dedicating a quarter of our plate to a protein food. The denser protein choices here are going to be seafood, lean meats, and soy products. You can add a lot of protein to your meal by choosing a starchy food that has some protein. So for example, whole grains have more protein than refined grains, so you'll get more protein from brown rice compared to white rice. But the even bigger protein content will be is if you opt for legumes as your starchy food. Chickpeas, beans, edamame, lentils. And of course, you can opt to merge the starchy quarter and the protein quarter of your plate if you are opting for a whole food source of plant protein. So if your chickpeas, edamame, lentils, uh, beans are not just your starchy food, but also your protein food. I also find it much easier to hit my protein goals by eating three meals per day, incorporating protein at each of those meals. So for example, with my goal of 100 grams of protein per day, I can easily aim for 30 to 40 grams of protein at each of three meals. Most of the time I can hit that with as little as three ounces of meat or fish and a few extra sources of protein on my plate, like maybe some cheese or some nuts and seeds or one of those higher protein starchy food options that I already mentioned. But if I were to try to hit my 100 grams of protein per day from only two meals, I think it would just be too much food for me to eat. And then we would get into the challenge of protein foods displacing other nutritionally important foods. So one of the things that happens quite frequently when people start focusing on more protein foods is they sacrifice their fiber foods just to be able to make enough like appetite, like room to eat all of that protein food. And that can lead to some gastrointestinal unpleasant times. So the easiest solution here is to divide our protein evenly among at least three meals per day. And if you eat a snack, think of ways that you can incorporate protein into a snack. Maybe that's some hard boiled eggs or some veggies with hummus, some Greek yogurt or cottage cheese. One of the foods that I like to keep in my pantry for easy snacks for everyone in the family is meat sticks. And of course, there is a vast collection of different protein bar options out there. 
You can also leverage protein powders, adding protein powder to a breakfast smoothie. I like to add a scoop of protein powder to oatmeal when I have oatmeal for breakfast. I also add collagen peptides to my coffee in the morning as a little extra boost of protein. You could blend some protein powder into your milk to have on a bowl of cereal or use a protein enhanced milk, like an ultra filtered milk. And there's lots of recipes out there for baked goods that have some extra protein in them using protein powder or other like protein rich foods like Greek yogurt or cottage cheese. There's protein pancakes, protein ice cream. I would just add that you don't want all of your protein to be coming from protein powder because protein foods contain a collection of important nutrients, not just protein. The easiest example I can give you is seafood, which is our most nutrient-dense protein food on average, about equal with organ meat. And not only are you getting protein, but you're getting those really beneficial omega-3 fats and a huge collection of vitamins and minerals. And that's something you miss out on if most of your protein is coming from protein powders. So another tip here is to diversify your protein sources. Mix it up between animal proteins and plant proteins. Then within each of those categories, mix it up even more. Double up your proteins at meals, like having a legume as your starchy food or adding some cheese to your scrambled eggs in the morning, both black beans and some kind of seasoned taco meat to your taco bowls, or adding something like hard boiled eggs or cubes of ham or shredded cheese to your salads. And I think finally here in terms of tips to add more protein is to remember that all protein counts. As long as you're getting your protein from a diversity of food sources, you really don't need to worry about complete versus incomplete proteins. And yes, even though broccoli doesn't have very much protein in it, that one or two grams per uh, the broccoli on your plate does add to your protein intake. So make sure when you're counting up your protein that you include all of the foods on your plate. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah, for reminding us why protein is important and also just giving us a wealth of tips and just ways to add more protein. I didn't even think of some of these. These are so great. I'm going to be re-watching this video myself to take notes again because this is so good. So for everyone new, uh, you know, it's January, we're thinking about making some health changes. We might have some new uh, watchers to your YouTube video. Can you give them the scoop on where they can get more information on Nutrivore, this idea of adding foods to our diet versus going on a restrictive diet plan for January? Well, first of all, welcome. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications because I cover uh, stuff like this in all of my videos. Lots of practical tips on nutritionally important foods to add to fill nutritional gaps rather than a restrictive mindset. And if you're interested in uh, digging in a little deeper, I suggest my book, Nutrivore, The Radical New Science for Getting the Nutrients You Need from the Food You Eat, which is available wherever books are sold. It might be in your local library. If it's not, you can always put in a request with your librarian. And if you're interested in tracking your intake of nutritionally important foods, including protein foods, I suggest grabbing a copy of the Nutrivore Weekly Serving Matrix that is incorporated in my book. So uh, two for one, or really like uh, the hundred for one, because there's so many great resources in here. But if you would prefer a purely digital resource, you can get that on my website, Nutrivore.com.